Hi everyone, it's Monica and welcome back to TaylorMade Cards For You. Well today we're going to talk about supplies and not the supplies that we necessarily go to every single time we make a card. These are the supplies that we had to have yet they sit on our shelves and we don't use them. And there's certain types of supplies that those fit right into that category for me. Now when they came out I had to have them and I love them and I love the results that I get with them but they're not necessarily my go-to supplies. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about these uh, particular ones and how we can hopefully this year get some use out of them. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is embossing folders. I have tons of embossing folders and if you're like me, you probably do too. They're not very expensive, they have great designs and they really do create great results. But for some reason, I don't use them very often and I'm not sure why. They make great backgrounds, um, they can really change up your card, and I find some of the embossing folders make great masculine cards. Now the other thing that, again, I had to have, but I just don't use very often, are dies, uh, are letter dies, letter and number dies. They're so versatile, you can do so much with them, but for some reason, I just don't pull them out very often, and I don't know if it's because Maybe I'm lazy, I don't wanna to have to think of a word to spell. I don't know, I just, for some reason, I just don't use them very often. And this is a set, I, I can distinctly remember um, when this set came out and Jennifer McGuire was promoting it and it was out of stock for the longest time. And then when it finally went back in stock, I was able to get it on sale and I love it because it's the great big letters and you can do so much with them. So I decided I'm gonna go ahead and use these uh, as well. Now the other thing, and I have about five of these, they don't make these anymore, but again, when they came out, I had to have it. It's a Tim Holtz product. Um, it's this Valentine one, and I just can't let go of it. And the reason I can't let go of it is because of this 14. I do use some of the other ones occasionally, right? But this 14 is what I really love. It's a really big letter, and it has framing as well but for some reason I just don't use it very often. So these are the things we're gonna do uh, work with today. And we're gonna go ahead and create some cards that will work as both masculine and feminine cards, um, but we're gonna do our best to try to incorporate these and come up with so hopefully some tips so that we don't let them sit on our shelves anymore. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so we're gonna make some cards uh, like this, where we have some embossing on the background and we can change it up with some lettering or some phrases. And you can make these both masculine and feminine uh, cards just based on the color that you choose. So I'm gonna use this, um, I was playing around a little bit today and I'm gonna use this as my inspiration to create a couple of cards. So what I find when I'm working with embossing folders, I like to have a card stock that has some texture. And I say that because, especially the Tim Holtz cardstock, once you emboss it, that uh, craft color on the back of the cardstock comes through. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. It's this. So when you have that embossing, uh, you could even uh, make it a little bit more grungy by using a sander. So that's why I really like this paper here. And I was at Joann's the other day and they had the colorful one um, on clearance. So I went ahead and I got it. Um, but black is a great color to create masculine cards, especially Valentine's Day cards, because you can incorporate smaller uh, colors like the reds and the purples, and it won't really take it over. Now, if you don't have the Tim Holtz uh, paper, another paper that works well to emboss is just, you know, some thicker cardstock. You're not gonna get the craft that comes up when you emboss it, but this paper is also really nice as well. But my point is you wanna get something that's somewhat thicker, so that way when you do um, emboss it, you can really see um, the design on your embossing folder. So I went ahead and I embossed a couple of colors here. And the, um, the designs that I'm working with, are a couple of designs that I shared and they were great for masculine cards. So this is the uh, Valentine Day one 
uh, let's see if I find it here, which is from Sissix, and it has a lot of great words for Valentine's Day. And then the other one that I used, uh, which is a great one for masculine cards as well, is uh, this, I think it's called, uh, uh, I can't remember what the name is of this design, um, but it's great for masculine cards as well. And um, I used it on my love letters. And as you can see, it just brought out just enough texture. So not only can you emboss your background, but you can also emboss some of your letters or your sayings if they're big enough. If they're too small, then it might tear through. So you wanna make sure if you do go that route that your letters are big enough to be able to stand the embossing. And then finally, I used this Gears one um, because Gears are always great for masculine cards. So we're gonna go ahead and incorporate these into a couple of cards today. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and trim this down. And I know that I'm gonna be working with A2 cards. So you might lose some of your designs. So just kind of keep that in mind. So um, I like to have a little bit of a white border. So my A2 card measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So I want to leave a quarter of an inch on each side. So rather than the four and a quarter, we'll do four here. Uh, uh, this is the long way. So we'll do uh, five and a quarter. And then we'll do four. Now, because I don't want to lose all of the design, I'm going to trim a little bit off on each side. So I'll just trim a little bit there and then I'll come in with my measurement on, on my second side. All right, so there's one base. And then keep this because again, you can cut out your letters. So you don't wanna waste any of that good cardstock. And then we'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now that I have my cardstock trimmed, um, I'm gonna just come in with a sander. And this is a sander that I got, I think when I had a pedicure one year. And I just, they give you a little packet and I ended up just keeping this because it's the perfect size to be able to just grunge it up a little bit more. And you don't have to do it a lot because you don't necessarily want all of it to come through, right? But you definitely want to help it along. So I'm just kind of doing this randomly just to bring it out a little bit more. All right, so once I've got that done, then I'm gonna go ahead and work with some of my letters. Now, one thing I found that when I had my dies out, I cut several words. So with the big letters, um, I had cut out the love and then I cut out be mine, but that's what I would recommend. And even if you're not gonna use all of them, once you have the die out, go ahead and cut out several words or even several letters that you know uh, make good combinations for your words. So, so that way you don't have to, uh, for some reason we just talk ourselves out of it, right? We just think it's too much work, but that way you don't have any excuse for not using some of the dies that create words. And then, you know, of course, if you can cut out several of your sayings uh, when you have your dies out as well, that's helpful. Um, so that way, Again, you don't think it's daunting and uh, you know having to pull out all of your tools and, and whatnot when you're actually going to create your, you know, your dies. All right, so now that I have a few choices here, let's see what we're gonna do. Now, what I did on this one is I spelled the word love and I actually covered the love here. So on this particular one, I want to see if I can incorporate the 14, which is right there. And then maybe, you know, just add the hugs and kisses. Um, so it's just a little bit of a pop to be able to, you know, add to, to the background. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Um, just something to uh, give it some contrast. And I really like the red on the black, so I might actually <clears throat> go this way first. So we're gonna do 
uh, be mine if I can fit these and if I can find my eye So let's see. So that'll be the first thing I do is just do B mine. <clears throat> and it's just a very, very simple Valentine. Um, but it, like you see, as you can see, it would work great for a, a masculine Valentine card. So let's go ahead and line these up and get them glued down. All right, and then once you have everything glued down, um, if you did use the paper that you can, you know, grunge up, this is a good time to do that. Um, it's a little difficult sometimes to do it on its own, but once you have it on, you know, your backing, it gives you something to hang on to. So I'm just grunging up my lettuce a little bit here. All right. Now, one of the other things that I like to do is I like to incorporate metal elements, especially into my masculine cards. So there's a couple things you can do here, right? You can, you know, add arrows like I did on this one here. Um, you can add little trinkets. Um, for this one, if you have any of the gears, you can add gears which would be great as well. But if you don't have any of those, brads are great because you can make them look like rivets. So that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add some brads to make them look like rivets. So I'm gonna get my hole puncher here and I'm not gonna have really any rhyme or reason. I'm just going to add them randomly. So I use these darker ones here. So add one there. And if you don't have a punch that will go all the way through, if you have one of those pokers, that'll work well as a as a substitute. So let's go ahead and put you know, one here maybe. So your brads don't necessarily just have to be to hold something down. They can also be used to decorate your cards. Um, so a lot of people forget that. So, you know, if you have brads and they're not very expensive, especially if you get them on sale, um, and you usually get a whole, you know, a whole lot in your, in your purchase. You know, don't, don't forget about those because those make great embellishments as well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep doing that and see what we can come up with. All right, so now that we have all of our brads uh, on our paper, um, we can go ahead and start to think about if there's anything else we want to add. Now, I, you know, intentionally kept this off of my cardstock because I had to fold over my brads. But if you have any items that you want to incorporate that don't necessarily need to ha be off of the card, then at this point you can go ahead and adhere your card um, and then add any additional embellishments at that point. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do that. So... Now, I, again, there isn't, you know, a, a lot of design on this, um, but it's a really easy way to make masculine cards, especially if you don't have a lot of products to use. You know, maybe you don't have a lot of stamp sets that will work well for Valentine's Day, uh, but you have letter sets or just, you know, dies and embossing folders in general that don't get a lot of use so this is a great way to not only pull out supplies that you haven't used in a while 
but to also create some great masculine cards. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and incorporate this little arrow as well. Just again to add a little bit more metal to the design. And then at this point, we can go ahead and set it aside to dry. All right, so the next card I wanna work on is this particular one here. And as you can see, we've already embossed it. Um, you know, you might want to get a little bit more grunge using your sander, but we need to figure out exactly what we're gonna do here. So I have some dies. that I want to incorporate. Okay, so ultimately I decided to go with the heart and the 14, and then we're gonna add some metal embellishments. So I'll share that with you as well. I had a hard time deciding which way I wanted to go, but I just felt that the red on purple just didn't stand out enough for me. So that's when I decided to incorporate this heart along with the number 14 for Valentine's Day. So let me just go ahead and get these adhered and then we can add our metal element. So as you can see, these colors in this design can, can really work for both a masculine or a feminine card. Okay, so we're gonna just let that dry a minute before we get our sander to it. And then we're gonna go ahead and add this to our cardstock um, because the item we're gonna be using is something that will get glued down. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this glued down and then we can add our metal element. Now one thing you are gonna want to be careful of and I wanna show you what I'm talking about is when you're using embossing folders, sometimes it can tear your paper. So you do want to be kind of aware of that, especially if you know, your, when you're embossing it, um, if the pressure is too thick, it may, you know, cut through. So just kind of keep that in mind that you do want enough pressure to be able to see your embossing, but not too much where it's gonna cut your paper. All right, so we've got that glued down, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and grunge up my, 14 in my heart a little bit. All right. And then this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, I do want to put the arrow on this, but I also wanted to put a little sentiment. So I have this wire that's really thin um, that you can get, you know, in most hobby shops. And I'm just going to wrap it around my arrow. Um, so that way it'll look like it's, well, it will be attached, not just look like it. Uh, and then there's really no rhyme or reason, just, you know, get a, get wire that's not too thick because you want to be able to wrap it around easily and still have it dangle a little bit. But I just like the look of this. and then we'll be good to go. Now, be careful when you are wrapping it because you are gonna have some sharp edges and you definitely don't wanna cut yourself. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my glue and then we should be good to go ahead and work on the inside. All right, and let's see, let's just 
just go right, right there. And I'm going to just hold this down a minute here. In fact, I may use my clips if I can find them just to kind of help it stay in place. I should have gone the other way. So we'll do the big clip. That won't reach. So we'll just go ahead and put this here. And then just give it a minute. And that pretty much will hold hold its place. Okay, so now that we have our card cards pretty much complete. I want to talk about the inside of the card. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of Valentine sentiments, um, but you don't necessarily have to make it a Valentine sentiment, right? One thing I had said before in my previous videos is I like to make cards during Valentine's season that will meet a lot of occasions. Now, of course, these basically are Valentine's Day cards, but this one can be used you know for almost any occasion and this is what i wanted to share with you so whenever i have a sentiment that maybe is really small i like to kind of add to it um, just so that way it will pop a little bit more and the stamp set that i'm using for the inside of my cards come from tim holtz and i'm using these numbers here just as a background and then uh the sentiment's going to go overneath uh, overneath, uh, over it. And then I have this old stamp from So Susie Stamps. So when you are creating, you know, a background, you want to make sure that you do pick ink that is, you know, subtle. You don't want it to be too dark because then your sense of it may not show through. So let's go ahead and, and do that and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so the ink that I used for the background, the numbers, um, is an oxide and I'm using pumice stone and I had already stamped one and as you can see I still have some re remnants of it so I'm going to see if I can reuse this because I want it subtle I don't want it real dark and that is pretty subtle I want it a little bit darker than that so I'll just kind of swipe it I don't want to saturate my stamp because I am just using it as a background. And that is perfect for me. And then I'm gonna come in with the actual sentiment stamp. Now with this one, you definitely want the ink to be darker. So I'm gonna use black for this. And I'll just use, I'm not gonna use an oxide, I'm gonna actually use my archival ink. And that's a good black ink. And this one I want to have nice and crisp, so I may stamp it a couple of times. But as you can see, the background is real subtle and just fills the inside of the card base a little bit more. And then if you want to further add to the design, just to maybe frame it a little bit, uh, this is where I added the heart. And this is something you don't necessarily have to do. Uh, but again, if you just want something a little bit more than just the sentiment inside, this is just an, a nice addition. And again, I don't use these stamps very often. So because it is close to Valentine's Day, it's a great opportunity for me to pull out some of these stamps that I don't use often enough and get some use out of them. And we'll just do one more stamp and I think that'll do it 
So I'm going to go ahead and put these cards together and I'll have some photos of them, uh, of the finished product at the end of the video. So stick around for that. But hopefully I've given you some ideas on how you can use that product that you just had to have and you just don't use very often. Uh, be strategic about it. You know, if you have embossing folders, pull them out and emboss several backgrounds so that way you have them already ready to go. And then again, if you have those letter stamps or letter dies that we all have, you know, maybe cut out several letters, cut out several words. So that way, when you do have a card that you want to put together, you know, and have a specific saying, you'll have that ready to go. Um, and it won't be so daunting for you. So if you've enjoyed my video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out. Um, and as always, you have the option of clicking on that little bell. So that way, when my videos do get published, you'll get notified. And then finally, um, I'll leave links to products that I've used. Um, this is the year of using up my stash. So some of these products may not be available anymore. Um, but certainly if I can find them, I will link to them. Um, and if I can't find the exact product, um, for you, I'll link, you know, something that probably would work with these stamp sets or with these die sets or even embossing folders, even when they get discontinued, there's a lot of companies out there that come up with similar product. So, uh, you could easily recreate the design, um, Whereas it might not be, you know, exactly, and you don't necessarily want to exactly copy a design, but it will be close enough where you can uh, create similar designs. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed the video, and we'll see you again next time.